Showtime! Ladies and gentlemen, please make your way to your seats. Showtime! Please make your way to your seats. The show is about to begin. Showtime! Let the magic begin! NASA propellantless propulsion drive breakthrough yeah. defies the laws of physics. So is this going to allow space travel? What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, so I think we covered one similar. I think the EM drive before. Um, but this also sounds familiar. So I, anyways, um, we talk about so much future tech. It's crazy here. And I read about so much more than, than what I post. So um, this article specifically uh, covers claims by Dr. Bueller, Dave, uh, Ferris Bueller, Bueller, um, who's a veteran NASA, NASA engineer. Um, his company, Exodus Propulsion Technologies, they apparently have developed a propellantless propulsion drive. Now, I have seen videos in the past of it's like uh, they're using uh, EM waves or uh, some sort of waves uh, for a very, very to propel a piece of paper upwards. So, again, I don't think this is totally far out there. Okay. Um, but Bueller asserts that the drive can generate thrust equal to Earth's gravity without expelling propellant by exploiting asymmetries and electrostatic fields. If true, this would defy our current understanding of physics, <laughs> Craig, um, and revolutionize space travel. So um, there's limited information provided because obviously this is theoretical, um, but um, like Again, there's lack of concrete detail, so there's there's a lot of skepticism here. But um, there have been breakthroughs in the past, so um, there's a long history of concepts, though, like the EM drive generating excitement before actually being debunked. So who knows if this gets debunked? Uh, but Bueller's NASA pedigree deserves some benefit of the doubt. Um, if his team has, if his team has eliminated all possible sources of errors and alternative explanations, this may merit conducting. A, a further assessments and things like that. So um, if this was feasible, the implications would be immense. It would dramatically lower launch costs. It would enable deep space exploration. Um, th there's a lot. So um, now I'd like to, I'd like to quote uh, Carl Sagan. He famously said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So um, well, any viable new space drive concept should be vigorously pursued. We must start from a position of kind of skeptical scrutiny when confronted with claims that appear to violate the laws of physics. So um, the key question here is whether this drive truly generates thrust without expelling propellant. Yeah. And whether it can actually uh, achieve, what do they call that moment where the un uh, to achieve unity, uh, which yeah. refers to the moment the drive produces enough thrust to live it lift itself in their gravity yeah i think it's like oh, i can't remember but their claim is that the thrust is equal to one g on earth um on earth so yeah and that's what they they claim they found in 2023 discovery of a new force is fundamental in that electric fields alone can generate a sustainable force onto an object that allows center of mass translation of said object without expelling mass yeah so it can so using electricity or electrical fields, we can move things without expelling mass. <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. So, um, as Newton's third law states that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, the thing with this is the fundamental laws of physics seem to preclude the possibility of thrust without ejecting propellant, however. There are a few potential explanations that could speak to this. First, the drive interacts with some external medium, and you're going to love this, like the quantum vacuum or electromagnetic fields in a way that provides a reaction force. So it may not be entirely propellantless system, right? So it takes advantage of a loophole in current physics, tapping into phenomena not fully understood like quantum vacuum fluctuations, which we talked about previously. Um, so new magic, I mean, physics could be uncovered. Um, but again, um, there are potentially experimental errors or unaccounted factors um, that make it appear that the drive generates thrust without propellant. So the thrust may not actually exist, if that makes sense. So um, 
based on this, the drive does violate Newton's third law. So uh, we may have to dive down to the uh, nuclear level for this, but um, we'll have to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, their claims here is that there are rules that include conversion of energy, but if done correctly, one can generate forces unlike anything humankind has done before. He also said that it will be a f th it will be this force that will we will use to repel objects for the next thousand years until the next thing comes along. Yeah. Um, but it used proponents of the EM drive and the IVO LTDs quantum drive have similar claims in the past. Neither of these have so far provided tangible results. Exactly. So again, we gotta, we've got to be skeptical about this again. So it, we, we've got a, the lens is more of a quantum lens for this as opposed to uh, classical physics. So um, again, this could be, uh, this could be hocus pocus or hokum or I don't can't really remember the word. Um, but I like this. I like that that there is potential for Star Trek like um, travel, Star Trek like drives, different things like that. Like I, I I like that people are challenging this. And whenever there's there's new new discoveries, there's always going to be failures, lots and lots of failures. And from the biggest successes are come the uh, from the biggest failures come the biggest successes, right? So um, hopefully that's one of these. So they're trying to tap into what is it called the Casimir effect of um yeah so there's a couple of things that are being proposed um so the first off is manipulating quantum vacuum uh virtual plasma so the theory suggests that these drives interact with virtual particles popping in and out of existence in empty space <laughs> um through methods like asymmetric resonant cavities so this could potentially produce a momentum transfer without propellant. So that's one. The one that we just talked about, and we actually covered the Casimir effect before too. So the dynamic Casimir effect. So fluctuations in the quantum vacuum induced by factors like rapid motion or oscillating electromagnetic fields may actually provide a push. But calculations show any possible effect would be extremely tiny at this point. So um, there's other things like modifications to inertia, uh, gravitomagnetism, multidimensional physics. So um, any viable explanation would require extending physics into very speculative areas that lack solid experimentation foundations at the time. So um, there's vague terminology, there's new force, there's asymmetry, there's there's a whole bunch of things that, again, need to be challenged and, and scrutinized. So the end of the article here says Exodus Propulsion Technologies massive claim will likely be met with skepticism until it's able to demonstrate its technology in space. So let me ask the question. When do you think it'll be able to demonstrate its technology in space? Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> always the same question. I love it, though. This is great because I like putting timelines to things. Uh, it makes things seem potentially more viable. So um, if let's just talk about like a timeline. So in the near term, in the next two to five years, um, there's going to be lab prototypes potentially built and a small scale thrust demonstrated, let's hope, and initial feasibility studies for applications um, might come into play. Uh, in the midterm, in the five to 10 year frame, um, they'll, they'll tr potentially try to scale up the thrust from uh, up to one to 10 millinewtons in ground demos. Um, and, and again, more design. In the long term, we're talking 10 to 20 years, we're maybe 100 plus millinewton prototypes uh, and then in the far term, 20 plus years. So advancements in power scale, uh, 100 kilogram class deep space probe launches, different things like that. So we're looking 20, 30 years out at least. Yeah, I'm just you know, highlighting this for the people who are watching. There's a, a great comment, um, which somebody's delved into this pretty, pretty intensely. Um uh, balloons and maglevs rise just fine so long as the momentum is transferred to the earth if there is some interaction with massive gravitating object inertia could still be conserved inertia and energy are also unlikely to be conserved on universe size scales simply because their basis uh know their theorem and invariance of the Langrarian space yeah. time translations doesn't hold, although any effect is assumed to be impractical and a minuscule. Um, now, getting the heart of the matter, Butler's idea about producing thrust against gravity with a static electric 
electromagnetic field, I think is actually doing some kind of interesting science in uncharted waters, I believe, because although we have done some experimentations decades ago using electron beams, we really don't know whether reasonable significant charges coupled with gravity and by measuring any tiny accelerator accumulate acceleration accumulated over time is actually exploring new regimes of physics. Although we know electrically neutered matter and antimatter falls normally into gravitational fields, we don't know if any charged particle behaves this way, including isolated electrons and protons. So it goes on and on. So there's some very mm-hmm. interesting um uh, very interesting stuff here around whether this is true or not, whether this is uh, breaking new yeah. ground, and whether well, we can actually do it. like what, what yeah. you just said there, right? And yeah. and the thing is too is we this might be possible, and we just might not be able to measure it with our current uh, technology, right? And and we might not be because it's it's so tiny, we might not be able to measure and we might we might be able to produce it. We just can't measure it. Who knows? There's a whole bunch of things that come in that, that are yeah. And you know, we've talked about a couple things. I'm, you mentioned a couple things I want to get to there get to, but uh Sakharov's theory of gravity as a regu- residual elastic force of electromagnetism, and more recently holographic theories which treat gravity as an illusion of quantum quantum electromagnetic and other fields in a globally warped space time so we're Hmm. really talking about a quantum is magic you talked about uh, (laughs) things popping in and out of existence and that's how why we can do this you know you sit back and say i feel like i'm bones now on the enterprise like i don't want to go into the transporter please it's (laughs) You know, I can pop out of existence and never pop back into existence. Like, do we yeah. really, you know, and we're really interested. This is really interesting and cool technology. But I, I I guess, you know, like they say, any significantly advanced technology uh, can appear as magic. So yeah. we just uh, and I'm just sit back and say, oh, this is magic. We just don't understand it yet. Um, this is really cool and it uh is this going to be you know because this talks about it here um is it this looks like it would, could be great for space vehicles out of gravity wells but not necessarily for interstellar travel um maybe because we can't reach those speeds yeah so um i i, I don't know uh just because it's still theoretical um but um, the upper limits of the propellantless drive might reach into the kilonewton range eventually. Um, and I don't know what that means as far as, like, that's kilonewtons of thrust, right? I don't know what that means as far as speed goes. Um, but I think, so just to put that into perspective, chemical rocket, chemical rockets produce thrust ranging from kilonewtons for small engines up to meganewtons for Saturn's uh, VF1 engine. So um, we're not even like we're, we're at the very beginning or, or the maximum amount could be just chemical rockets. So this could just be for um, not so much interstellar, but long interstellar, but getting us off of Earth very cheaply and different things like that. Instead of the what was that? Uh, the swing, um, uh, the uh, centrifugal. Uh, oh, yeah, satellite. the thing. The thing yeah. that's basically a catapult that throws stuff into space. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> that yeah, we we have to talk about that. We pull it up yeah. the video. It looks pretty interesting. The slingshot or whatever. Yeah. Um, and this is interesting because you know potentially once you're in space, yeah. you could use this drive to continuously speed up. Yes. Whatever that potential limit is. So. You know, if we're talking about like three body problem and how fast they can get here, they can go at, you know, uh, 10% of the speed of light. That should only take 40 years, but it's going to take 400 because they got to yeah. speed up and slow down. And we're, as humans, are affected by um, the gravity, but also the ability to break. Like you can speed up so fast, but they have to use the same to slow down. Yes. And the biggest, and, and I think we talked about this too, but the problem isn't traveling at that speed. The problem is us, our bodies accelerating to that speed. We can't, we can't handle that. Once we're at the speed, for sure, we're fine. So if I think we talked about a bubble that would encapsulate, I think at one point too, that 
But anyways. Yeah, a warp bubble and a couple other things. We've talked about a few interesting technologies here. Um, so let me ask you a different question. Propellantless propulsion is all, you know, is something that we dream of here on the planet so that we don't have, you know, waste. So, you know, is that something we might see uh, actually Absolutely. instead of space travel? We might see it in whatever... That very well potentially yeah depending on how 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 fast it could ramp up and accelerate uh, a vehicle um but if they're talking about using this to launch satellites and um what's what's stopping them from using it for for aerospace or even in cars but i don't think cars but like maybe who knows um yeah maybe it, not yet but yeah who knows because we're let's we're going to jump to this next one because the thing right now is it takes so much energy to do this. So, you know, energy on a next level beyond um, mm -hmm. what we're generally capable of, you know, running around with. So yeah. you need some side of portable nuclear reactor to throw on a spaceship that can <laughs> generate enough energy that oh, portable, God, whatever. Portable nuclear no, reactor. What, a portable being whatever, fission, fusion, we're going to jump to, like, all the spaceships are usually powered by some fusion or fission reactor in, you know, movies and whatnot. So you assume they're going to be able to build one, whatever size. I'm not portable yeah. being, you know, could be the size of my freaking house because you're talking about spaceships. Uh, could be even bigger. I don't know. But you assume they're going to have that to power whatever drive they're using because yeah. you know it, it, it in itself doesn't provide thrust. Yeah. All yeah. right. Any final words on this one? No, you just brought up a good point, though. Maybe this will overtake my hydrogen uh, uh, theory. So, uh, but we're talking maybe 50, 100 years down the road. So, I, I honestly think it'll be longer. Okay. And and the reason I think it'll be longer is it takes too much energy. Oh.